morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see everyone. Is there less smoke in the air for you? Yeah. Oh. Well, hopefully they'll get those all put out. Then. So why don't we begin and stand for our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, it is impossible for us to express our thanks adequately for the abundance of your blessings upon us. You are so gracious to grant us the privilege of being your children. We thank you for the gift of eternal life. We ask that you bless the use of the gifts of our communicating with the wonders of your love. And we give these thanks in honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Jesus, we gather as we are to live in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with faithful hearts and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my sins unto the Lord. May God forgive the offense of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we, we confess, confess to you that we are by nature sinners, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. done. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy pleading for and seeking your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most merciful God, you have but given you your only begotten Son to die for us. Have, have mercy upon us, and for Jesus' sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and, and by 
by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, that by your grace we may come to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only son to die for each and every one of us. And for Jesus to say, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on Jesus' name, he gives power to become children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Those who believe and are baptized shall be saved. Grant this, O Lord, unto us all. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. This reading is from the New King James Version. Isaiah 56.1 Thus says the Lord, Keep justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Also the sons of the foreigner, who joins themselves to the Lord to serve him, and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath, and holds fast by covenant. Even then I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called the house of prayers for all nations. The Lord God, who gathers the outcast of Israel, says, Yet I will gather to him others beside those who are gathered to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next is Psalm 67, to be read responsibly. God be merciful to us and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us. And that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let the, all the peoples praise you. O oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously, and govern the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. And then the earth shall yield for your increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Here ends the reading. For those who can, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Today's Gospel continues with Matthew and the 15th chapter. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with the Gospel's creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Now notice here our, from our reading of the faith of the Syrophoenician woman. It's even described by our Lord in the final verse where it says, O oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. Great is your faith. Now great faith, I think that is a very powerful stuff, uh, statement here. And the elements of great faith is in our text. And I think that we can all agree that great faith has the attributes of being clear-sighted, humble, earnest, and persistent. We can see all of these things in this text this morning. Clear-sightedness shows a discernment of evil. This woman saw that her daughter was possessed of the devil, that her faculties were under the power of an evil spirit. Her eyes were not blinded by the maternal partiality of a mother. She clearly apprehended and understood the terrible fact of what was going on. She saw that her daughter was, in the term, grievously fed, vexed. The demon, in this case, was extraordinarily, had an extraordinary malignancy. Note that as in evil men and in devils, there are varieties and various degrees of malignity. This woman also had a discernment of the cure. She saw that the cure for her daughter was not within the ordinary physician's skills. She may even come to this conclusion based on experience. Probably she had tried such modes of healing as were in vogue among her heathen neighbors, that of incantations and strange forms of exorcism. But all was in vain. Devils are stronger than men. But she saw the cure in the power of God. That power devils must acknowledge. They ain't got a choice. That power she sought in Jesus Christ. When she called him Lord, she wasn't paying a complimentary sir. She identified him as the Christ, for such is the meaning of the title, Son of David. And she saw the cure in the mercy of God. The Messiah of prophecy is full of mercy. Jesus was merciful in accordance with the promise. So she naturally cried mercy for her child. Now we know that great faith is also humble. Starting with conduct. This woman cried for mercy. There was no plea of expectation. Her hope was the sympathy of a merciful heart. Nothing can touch like the cry of misery. She cried after him, in verse 23, followed at a distant, unworthy to come too near. As a daughter of Canaan, 
Her behavior was accorded with the condition of a servant. When she did come near, she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. In her, the humble attitude of worship expressed truly a humble spirit. We even have humbleness and temper. She consented to the appellation of dog. I always wondered about that. Truth from her Lord was her humble reply. Dog here is opposed to sheep. The clean animal in the law was the type of the Israelite. The unclean of the Gentile. And she was a Greek or Gentile, a Syrophoenician by race. She does not seem to have any ideas of being a proselyte. It does not follow, however, that she was an idolater. Her actions show otherwise. Hiram, a king of her nation, for example, had a hand in building the temple of Solomon. And he was a lover of David. And he blessed the God of Israel. Read 1 Kings chapter 5. And Zarephath, where dwelt the worthy widow in the days of Elijah, was in the land of Sidon. Take a look at 1 Kings 17. Many Gentiles in those parts respected Judaism and looked for the promised Messiah. If she understood the spirit of the law and the force of the promise which makes clean the Gentile believer and constitutes him the child of Abraham's faith. But she didn't plead these items. She accepted the title of Dar. She expect, accepted it in the spiritual as well as in the ceremonial specification. Well, that brings us to the earnestness of the great faith. Here was a golden opportunity. Jesus was in parts of Tyre and Sidon. So the stage was set at the first verse of this passage. He was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, yet went to the limits of his commission to cast a look of pity over the boundary. Hearing of his nearness, she came out. She did not wait until Jesus should cross over the borderland. Had she done so, she would have missed the opportunity. Many lose their souls by devising opportunities instead of accepting those provided by God. Abram had to come out of Ur in order to inherit Canaan. This woman had to come out of Phoenicia and inherit and blessing of Israel. Must the sinner leave his sins in order to find salvation? If he be in earnest, he will not miss his opportunity, an opportunity provided by God. Well, the heart of faith is in its cause. The woman made her daughter's case her own. You notice that. Her daughter is the one that is vexed. Her cry was, have mercy upon me. Her plea was as though she herself was sorely vexed with the demon that possessed her child. So she sought relief as for herself. And she said, Lord, help me. Her importunity moved the disciples to plead for her 
Send her away, for she crieth after us. O oh, disciples, and does the voice of prayer trouble you? <laughs> Send her away. How little at present do you resemble the master, says God. We never read of his being troubled with the cry of the poor and the needy. And this is all that we have to urge here, isn't it? Your charity amounts to just so much as that of some wealthy person who gave a poor man a penny. Not out of compassion, but in order to get rid of him. But whether the motive of the disciples was that of the unjust to judge or something more worthy of him, the earnestness of the woman cannot be mistaken. We finally move to my favorite part, persistence. Great faith is persistent. It refuses <clears throat> discouragement. Jesus answered her not a word, which I thought when I read this in the beginning many years ago, that how strange. Here she is begging for mercy and Jesus is ignoring her. However, he didn't answer her, but she still cried because he knew the quality of her faith. We mustn't construe delay in answering our prayers into a refusal to answer them. It may be drawn out the quality of our faith. How many times have we heard, well, God's not listening to me. <laughs> Want to bet? Sometimes the answer is no! But not in this case. <clears throat> God proves that he may improve our faith. Silence is a great way to do that. Jesus refused the intercession of his disciples for her, and still she cried out. And he answered her and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that shut him up. But it didn't affect this woman at all. Jesus entered into a house and would have no man know of it. Apparently to avoid her importunity, once again, her persistence. But he couldn't hide. This woman followed him. And then she fell to his feet. Jesus said, it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. This was the culminating point, obviously, from our text. In the very heart of discouragement, it finds encouragement. Never for a moment did she lose sight of that great argument. That is, that hers was the appeal of misery to a merciful heart. The more sensibly we feel the burden, the more resolutely we pray for its removal. Christ himself, in his agony, prayed most earnestly. The plea of misery to mercy remains in undiminished force. The thickness of her faith, I'm goodness, the quickness of her faith could even discover the presence of that mercy in the tenderness of tone behind the sternness of expression. Didn't Jesus use, it's what it's called the diminutive term, little dogs? Here was a term she readily seized on. Children are familiar with the little dogs and have no objection to their eating the crumbs from the master's table. Sometimes it can help out. <laughs> Moreover, it was their master's table. 
So it can't go badly for the dogs. There is bread enough for the children to spare. For the servants and the dogs. A crumb of Christ's mercy is sufficient to expel the most malignant devil. So faith triumphs. O woman, he said, by faith the dog is already transferred, or transformed, I should say, into the woman. Great is thy faith. Jesus admires her faith to the end. So we may admire and imitate it. Be it done unto thee, even as thou wilt. The faith in willing. And her daughter was healed from that hour. And notice, she was healed at home. She wasn't out with his mo her mother. Here was a gleam of that light that we hear so much about that was to lighten the Gentiles, a presage of that mercy to the be faithful. And this was revealed after his death. Here also is a proof that the curse upon Canaan was only meant for those of his race who should follow unbelief. The doom of the corporate bodies does not necessarily fall upon all the individual members. That's a real good point here. Only upon the unbelief was God directing his ire. True faith saves forever. Amen.
my spirit, Father, is what we try to bring to you, into your presence. We bring these offerings to you, these gifts that you gave us first. And we give them to you to use as you wish to help us, to help the community, the congregation, anything and everything. We know that what we do is to glorify your holy name. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, Take and eat, this is my body, broken for you. As often as you eat of this, do so in the remembrance of me. When they finished their supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink of this, do so in the remembrance of me. Our table is set. <clears throat>
Having shared the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have done so grievously for his sacrifice and joyfully for the knowledge we know <coughs> is going to return. Amen. 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 I always like to share praise reports first. Um, Ann's son, Ryan, PET scan came back this week and he has no cancer. No. 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 One. He has his first scan coming up this week and we're praying there's no cancer. That's not what it says. <laughs> okay, I stand corrected. So we'll pray that there's no cancer. Right. Okay. Um, Eastern Washington, yeah, those whose homes are have been lost and are still in danger of being lost in these fires. So I got a text from my daughter. I wanted to make sure that we hadn't burned up yet. <laughs> so said, no, they're not that close. Huh? And also those recovering in Maui. Well, yeah, we got that far. Yeah, but you're right. Uh, Christine. <laughs> Tangvald, aunt and grandmother, diagnosed with advanced pancreatic cancer. This is from Heidi. So definitely lift your aunt up. So any other specifics that we know of you'd like to pray for? The well, hurricane then, in California. Pardon? The hurricane in California. Hurricane, yeah, no kidding. Hurricane there, fires in Maui, and all of the loss. and. I guess we last I saw in the news was 101 people dead in Maui from the fires, and they're still searching. Whew. Well, let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we have many things on our hearts when we consider the turmoil of our lives and of this world. We specifically remember those who are suffering loss, either loss of friends, <coughs> or family members, as well as homes in Maui. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Don't know the results yet, but I know a hurricane was barreling towards California. We ask that they be taken care of and be protected, and that the damage is minimal and the loss of life is zero. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Of course, the fires here in in western you in the western Washington that we have actually eastern Washington that we continue to be concerned about and that those people who are already have lost their homes not heard whether or not anyone has lost their lives but you know you know where they are you know what they need Lord in your mercy yeah. Father, we specifically lift to you Christine, who has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. We know how devastating that can be. So we lift her to you. We lift her family to you as they help her through these times. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And we lift to you Ryan. We pray that the PET scan shows that he has no cancer. We know how joyous that event is when someone has been diagnosed and find that he or she is cancer-free. So we lift this to you in your mercy. Father, as we take new steps in our Christian lives, we step carefully forward, praying to you for guidance, Joyous in the knowledge that you are there and that all things are what you want them to be. We ask that you bless the steps taken and we ask that you are continuously with us as new dimensions happen. And we lift these, Father, to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he place his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs>